Alright, here we go. Okay. You're tuning in to RNFM Radio. We're hanging out on the pulse of nursing. And this is our 100th episode, so stay tuned. And welcome to another episode here on RNFM Radio. It is January 29th, 2014. And speaking of episodes, this is our 100th episode here. And not only are we hanging out on the Pulse of Nursing, we're hanging out on Google Hangouts live on air. And, of course, it uh, looks like my camera is actually continuing to bonk out here. I'm not exactly sure why. But, anyway, um, I at least wanted to welcome all of you. We're live, finally live here, Hangouts on Air. And we've got some awesome sauce guests today. And, of course, uh, if you don't know who I am, well, you should. I'm Kevin Ross, hanging out here in my studio in Colorado. And this, of course, is my fellow co-host, Keith Carlson, hanging out in Santa Fe. But, again, on the Hangout on Air. Keith, how are you, sir? Hey, Kevin. I'm doing great. Great to see you. Great to see you live to be here on Google Hangouts on Air. We have a couple live guests with us who we'll introduce in a second, Elizabeth Scala and Carol Gino. Welcome to episode number 100. We are growing and changing and evolving, and we're happy to have you here with us. So thanks for having me here, Kevin. Uh, well, it's kind of a requirement, Keith, but that's okay. Ah. Um, it is wonderful to be here with you. Now, um, if you need to know anything that's going on with the radio show, well, then head over to rnfmradio.com because that is what is what over there, um, over there, and you'll know who we are, what we are, what the heck we're doing, and who we're doing it with, and keep that above the level. That is, this is a family show, so... Who we're doing it with, it's all, it's all family around here. Now, on rnfmradio.com, if you go to the Listen Now button, you'll be able to find all of our archive shows over there right now. We're not broadcasting live over there at the moment because we're here on the Google Hangout. So um, I did want to share with the community today, we've got some awesome sauce news. So you can listen to us via our HTML5 player over there on the Listen Now button. And... I would like to say, as of today, I was notified by Stitcher Radio. We are now on Stitcher Radio. And if you head over there to the Listen Now button, you will find the player. You can download Stitcher on your iOS device. That would be your iPhone or your iPad. And, of course, any Android device that you may have. And you'll be able to listen to all of our shows over there. So thanks to Stitcher for allowing us an opportunity to be over there and to pull all those shows in. And it just gives us another way to reach our community. Now, of course, we're always hanging out under the hashtag RNFM Radio. And I don't know, Keith, are you hanging out under the hashtag RNFM Radio right now? Um, and even if you're not, that's okay, um, because we'll just get something over there on the hashtag RNFM Radio. And that's cross-platform. We use that Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. That's right. You can right. still well, find us on iTunes. Yeah, no, no, mm -hmm. go, ahead. go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I am posting on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Google Plus as we speak. So go right ahead. I'm sending those messages out right now. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, now that we're on Stitcher, and if you just go to the Listen Now button, I did want to let everybody know we are still technically on iTunes, but we're trying to get our feed switched over. So if you're um, an RSS feed aggregator pulling that in through your iTunes, then you're not going to be able to get the new shows right now. But I'll announce that as soon as we get that all switched over. And, of course, we're proud members of the ProMed Network over there, promednetwork.com forward slash RNFM radio. Now, you can also call us at 720-466-3022. That's not our studio number. That's just our voicemail and our texting line. And any comments or questions that you have, we'd love to bring them on the show. That's quite a mouthful today, and I think it's just because I'm so excited because we are finally, finally live on Hangouts on Air after this fiasco. So thank goodness, Keith. Um, it's just a pleasure to be here with you and, of course, with these incredible guests that I know 
are just going to totally rock it today. So why don't we just start the rock and roll session here? Let's get it going, Keith. Let's go. All right. All right. So let's start with introducing our guests. I am going to start with Elizabeth Scala. Elizabeth is here. She's been on the show many times with us. Elizabeth, I've actually lost track of how many times you've been on RNFM radio. But she is a spiritual practice nurse on a mission to transform the profession of nursing from the inside out. Individuals typically enter nursing with a desire to provide compassionate, heart-based care, Challenged by regulations, financial pressures, and technological advancements, today's nurse, that's you, struggles to balance the art with the science of nursing. As a speaker, trainer, facilitator, and author, and good friend of RNFM Radio, Elizabeth inspires nursing teams to reconnect with the passionate and fulfilling joy that once called them to their career. And she's the author of Back to the Basics, a nurse's pocket guide to self-care. So, Elizabeth Scala, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Keith, and thank you, Kevin. Thank you guys so much for having me here. It's exciting to be back again, and I'm, it's interesting because we have been on the radio so many times, but to actually talk uh, on the video, I can't just walk around the room and pace as I usually do. I have to sit still. <laughs> you do, and I know it's That's hard awesome. for you to sit still. You're, you have so much energy, Elizabeth, we understand, but you, you know, pace if you have to in between <laughs> segments, okay? <laughs> I might okay. actually be the only one I might actually be the only one standing here because I'm actually at my standing desk which is apparently healthier. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. So I can pace all I want, you know. That's what I I'm ready to go. That's what I have always heard from radio show hosts and guests and different folks like speaking and standing is just so much more healthy and so much more productive. So I've got to get one of those standing desks too it seems. <laughs> oh, I think I might have to, too. I actually spoke at an event here in Santa Fe last night, and I was standing on a stage, and it was great to stand there with a microphone and pace around because it helped my nervous energy, too. So meanwhile, here on the radio, I just have to tap my fingers and tap my foot to get the nervous energy out. Um, nice. Anyway, let's. I also want to introduce our next guest whose reputation precedes her and actually doesn't need an introduction, but I'm going to do my very best. She is Carol Gino, and most of you know Carol Gino as the author of The Nurse's Story, which was published back in the 80s, and it's been sold in nine foreign countries. It's still in print in Japan. It's been on the Book of the Month Club, the Nurse's Book Club and it was on Publishers Weekly list for six weeks and it was number two on the Los Angeles Times list so Carol is a spiritual healer, she is a nurse, she's an author, she is a blogger, she is a video star she is a consummate nurse and caregiver and healer and she is just an all-around renaissance woman and wonderful person who we really love deeply just like we love Elizabeth so Carol Gino I could say so many things about you but welcome to RNFM yeah, Radio yeah. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Keith. Hi, everybody. Hello. And it is still in print. It's in Amazon. It's I bought a publishing company. Got all my books, uh, rights, reversions. I got the reversions on all of them to me, which all the nurses who are writers should do. Mm -hmm. And then you can publish them for as long as you like. And um, they're in digital and hardcover on Amazon or through my own site, you know. That's Hopefully great. Hopefully or Amazon. That's great. So, Carol, first, where do people find you? What's the website they should go to, the main site for everything, Carol Gino? Probably HopefulHealer.com. Okay, so HopefulHealer.com. And, Elizabeth, where is the main place for people to find you, just so when they're listening now they can look at your website or look at it after the show? ElizabethScala.com. So Elizabeth Thanks Scala. Thanks to all of you. Thank you. <laughs> so it's Elizabeth with a Z, right? Elizabeth. Yes. And Scala is S-C-A-L-A. -A. So ElizabethScala.com and HopefulHealer.com. So, great. So, Kevin, where do we want to take this? We have an hour or so with these wonderful women, and um, we could talk about anything. Well, you know, this is not our show, Keith. We are just the humble hosts here. What we want to do is help promote... Um, what Elizabeth and, of course, Carol have going on in their lives, their professional lives. And, hey, if you want to bring in something personal, that's fine. Um, so, Elizabeth, you just mentioned that ElizabethScala.com, it is now live. It is launched. It is it is just rocking it. I love the simplification of the site. You've really gone through a whole rebranding process there, uh, which, again, we've 
we've really talked to you, uh, talked with you through that process or mm -hmm. talked to you through that process, uh, some of it anyway. But what what's going on over there at ElizabethScala.com? What's different? What's the same? What can you tell us about it and what are you doing? Well, I guess the main difference, Kevin, is the fact that to me it's much more clear what the purpose is, how I can help people, and what I enjoy doing with my work professional time. And actually, I was on LinkedIn today um, reading around some different discussion groups, and I saw a bunch of nurses posting questions about transitioning from the bedside to maybe a non clinical role and what can they do about that. And my suggestion in those discussion posts, and then my discussion, my, my suggestion to myself in my website is having more of that clarity, um, really asking yourself what you enjoy, what you're good at, what you want to see yourself doing, even if you weren't getting paid to do it, you know, like what do you love to do? So I feel like that new website absolutely speaks that vision because being able to teach, being able to speak and, and train nurses and facilitate workshops and retreats, that's what I want to be doing. So that's kind of the new feel of what's going on over there. Great, great. Well, like I said, we, of course, um, know everything that's going on over there, and we're really excited for you, Elizabeth, and I know that our community is too, and I can't wait to hear even just a little bit more how we dial in uh, regarding what it is that you're doing. But to give Carol a turn, we'll go ahead and bring you in on Carol, and, and so you're talking about publishing. You've got some new literature in the works, new writing. What's happening over there, Carol? Well, I'm sort of trying to wrap up the 20 books that I have started, you see, all for the last 20 years. But Only right 20. now, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. 20, just 20 books, folks. Just, 20. just, just, just I, finishing it up. I know, I really do. I've got <laughs> two of them are almost ready to be digitalized and printed. And then I've got another one that I'm going to take to a commercial publisher who seems to be interested in it um, to get the marketing right on it. That's the tough, toughest thing. But, you know, my brain is in a lot of different compartments, you know. And the compartment <laughs> about nursing that I was thinking about if it wasn't just that we should all be writing so that we give the patients at least a shot. You know, I, I really feel guilty about being part of an organization that has the deck so stacked, and it is stacked against the patients because we're holding back the information out of fear or what we think of as ethics or whatever. But... Um, one of the things about nursing I was thinking about is a nurse as a nurse practicing. What's the dream that nurses dream today when they go into nursing? If we, if we could make it as we want it to come true, how would we make a nurse? you know, today, what would, be long, what would we long for, what would we want? Because I realized that a lot of my love of nursing and passion for nursing comes from the joy I get from serving, period, you know? And it's the one place that you can sort of do it without losing face to either yourself or anybody else. It, it doesn't wreck your power position if you're helping someone, you know? But it feels good. You know, the rest I don't really give a crap about, except I wish they'd get out of my way so I could do it the way I wanted to, you know. <laughs> but what do nurses really dream nursing is? Mm -hmm. How are we going to e evolve that into a transformative vision? Because you can't make a dream come true till you have it. That's a great point, Carol. So, Elizabeth, in response to Carol then, what do you think nurses dream of when they dream about nursing? Like Carol's asking, what would be your initial response just kind of off the cuff? I think uh, that being able to leave work feeling that your work was meaningful, feeling that, as Carol just said, you were able to serve, you were able to help someone, that you were able to spend the time with the patient and really take care of someone and be with them on their healing process wherever they are on that healing process. So just finding meaning and value 
in your work and leaving with this smile, this, this satisfaction, this, this like your heart is so warmed because you got to help people all day long. Mm. Well, you, you know, speaking of, of helping people all day long, Elizabeth, and, and Carol, so I wanted to ask you first, Elizabeth, and of course, Carol, I'm sure you have some input on this. In your opinion, do you feel like nurses, new nurses especially, feel robbed of what nursing is really supposed to feel like or be um, because he or she has this idea of what they think it's supposed to be like and then they enter into. Now, and I'm only talking really about the more traditional roles of nursing and regardless of the alternatives, I, I mean, I think a nurse is a nurse. I don't think you're any less of a nurse uh, based on what you do, but in the more traditional sense, do you feel like um, that's why we see more interest in alternative nursing careers and and obviously burnout. I mean, are we are we being robbed because we get in like we're pulled by you know into nursing, but then why do we get like we push ourselves away so quickly from it? Hmm. Is that too like deep, confusing? I don't know. I just I I just it's I. I don't know if that made sense or not. I just it, it makes I sense. Yeah, it makes I think it, sense. Yeah, I think it makes perfect sense. Let Carol start because honestly, I couldn't speak to uh, the newer generation of nurse, even though I am a younger generation person, only because I feel like it's a twofold problem. Half people probably get called and pulled and and feel this feeling of what they want to do, but I'm also hearing about people going into nursing for different reasons now. So I don't know if I'm the best person to speak to it. So let I'll let Carol start and then see if I have anything to add. Cool. Okay. Uh, the only way that I can. Um, sort of add to it is to say that a lot of the young nurses when they get desperate somehow wind up calling me so I figure I know some of what the things they're going through are. Um, they mostly want to go into it to help as well in whatever fashion. Uh, but what happens is they get caught up in the bureaucracy of all of it and it becomes then a much more difficult job politically as well because that's not what they feel they signed up for and the really hard stuff that they need to be able to face and make decisions about and everything uh, they're really not schooled on they're schooled 10 percent on what they're going to encounter and 90 percent on the business of healthcare again which is constantly changing so uh, I think they're frustrated and I also saw a number the other day the other night I was reading uh, one of the journals that said next year there's going to be a 76 to 96 percent increase in uh, personal in assistance, healthcare assistance, which means what we used to call AIDS, which means that we're backstepping again. When I was first doing nursing, I started as an aide. Then I went to be an LPN. Then I went to be an RN because everybody knew that if you had an RN with as much training, she could notice a lot of things that possibly we put people in positions to notice that haven't had the training to do. And a bedpan then was never just a bedpan. It was a whole skill set, you know. But now what they're doing is they're moving nurses into management. They're pulling in, uh, pay, uh, in healthcare workers who haven't had the training and who get nervous about it, obviously, and nurses who are feeling robbed of the experience because they don't have the time. And we're helping set up a whole witch's brew of junk that nobody's going to be able to deal with is why I said how would a nurse, if we had to do a Barbie nurse or some kind of a Nellie nurse doll, what skills would we give her? What would we say that she needed to have and what would we want her uh, responsibility and acknowledgments to be? Uh, would we want her to be to have the responsibility that now doctors are perceived as having? Because I know that I saved doctors' asses a bunch of times during my career, you know, and they sure were lovely, did. grateful people. <laughs> right. You know, they were. 
And right. when they needed a nurse for their family, they would ask me to take care of them. So I know doctors aren't awful either. They're Right now, they're panicking like mad at the thought that they're not going to have that many nurses right there to confer with. I know that because they've told me that. Right. That's a good point, Carol. And I also think that one place we're seeing growth or, or I'm reading about and hearing about growth for nurses is in advanced practice, that mm -hmm. with the shortage of primary care physicians around the country because so many physicians are going into specialties because primary care doesn't really pay that much compared to these specialties that doctors can go into, that a lot of nurse practitioners are stepping in to that gap. And there is an a there are career and labor predictions and what would be the word projections mm -hmm. that, that space for nurse practitioners is really going to explode in the next 10 to 15 years as the the country continues to age what do you dream a nurse can be me <laughs> if you had to make it yeah if you had to make a nurse uh -huh. who would he or she be well See, my definition of nursing has continued to evolve and expand over time. So defining what a nurse is for me doesn't just come down to one definition anymore. If we were going to have, like you were suggesting, a, um, a doll to represent nurses, we would have to have a small army of them because they would be the one representing nurse entrepreneurs. They'd be the one representing advanced practice nurses. They'd be the one representing nurses in private practice, the ones in the hospitals. So I feel like the... the no, I mean, what would you love to do? What would I... I'd love to do what I'm doing right now, which is I'm, I work for an agency uh, in the next city over in Albuquerque, and I make my own hours. I have a fair amount of responsibility. I'm paid fairly well, and I get to practice nursing in the way that I want to. And then I work as a nurse entrepreneur and a, a nurse, I don't know, innovator maybe, um, sort of expanding even what my own personal definition of nursing is. So for me, it's what I'm doing right now. It's all the multifaceted parts of my current, the, the current manifestation of my career. And well, Ken? Well, and actually, hold on one sec, Carol. I, I wanted to, um, and I can certainly answer that, but Carol, we actually have a question from the community. Um, Leah had posed a question here on the Google Plus page. She says, she, love you, love Carol. Um, and she heard that you had a program out there to help nurses. Where can you buy it? Now, Carol, do you have, do, do you have several programs, or is it just that one program that you are um, uh, offering to nurses? What is it, and where can we find it? Okay, the one that I'm offering now is Power Strategies to Nurses, which helps them get through all the crumminess that goes on if they're working in an institution or organization. And they can get on that, um, on any of my Facebook pages, I think there are connections to it, and certainly um, on Revolutionary Nurse uh, or on Carol Gino. Yeah, if they sign up for my uh, newsletter on any of my pages, um, they'll be, um, we'll send them a letter and tell them or how they can reach them, you know. And I have several. I have a battered nurse syndrome, uh, the power of the unseen in healing. I have right to heal. Uh, where I'm going to try to show how storytelling is healing both for the writer and the reader and how we need new myth to develop new models. Okay. You know, great. Um, great. Thanks, well, Carol. That, that's great. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely put that out there. And, quick, and I will answer your question uh, quickly as, as far as, and then I, I'm sure maybe Elizabeth has, has something to add there as well as far as what I think nursing is or, or who a nurse is or what we do. And let me just take an example um, for, for what I do. One of the technological aspects of what I do in nursing, and, and I would consider this an you know, alternative career, is that uh, clients, as we like to call them, because I just feel like there's just a, a, a different level of importance when I call my patients my client. Um, they're clients of mine. And so they're becoming more savvy. They're becoming uh, more interested in their own 
health care and to be a partner. Um, and they're utilizing technology to apprise themselves of what's going on out there and what's going on with their bodies. The beauty about it is, you know, this technology, it's really, it's really easily accessible. And in even some areas, I had said it, even in San Antonio, Texas, um, I think it's the first digital library like in the country, I think. They don't have any books. You walk in the library and there are no books. Um, but you can check out an iPad or they have iMacs everywhere. But that being said, with all of that inundation of the technology and all that information, I like to position myself as a consultant and to help educate them about what it is that they're absorbing because it's a lot of information. And some of it's not really correct or you know, as correct as it should be. So I, I align myself with that technology and with the clients that we serve so that we can better educate them about what's going on. Quite frankly, Carol, um, I've, I've continued to carve out a niche here for myself, you know, in my own business and what I do. And, and I know that you have, and Elizabeth has too. So Elizabeth, what is it that you're doing on your level here as a nurse? What are you providing to the community out there? Um, maybe the clients that you serve that aren't nurses and maybe the clients that you are serving that are nurses. Well, the clients that I serve are nurses, Kevin. <laughs> so they, uh, I was actually asked this this morning, you know, why do you write for our community or why do you teach um, nurses? Like what is, what is it that you want to do? What is it that you feel called to do this for? So very succinctly as I was trying to picture this in a one sentence answer, um, what I really enjoy the most is helping to inspire, to really energize the nurse so that they can find that, what I was talking about in my first answer, that meaning, that value, you know, that connection with nursing, why you even went into nursing in the first place, and bring those things to the forefront so that you can work in a stressful environment. Because my belief is that this healthcare system, the changes in healthcare, all this reform, all these things happening, the hospital environment, the out of hospital environment, all of that is stressful and none of that stress is going away. So really um, uh, allowing nurses to reconnect with why they became a nurse, what they love about it, and then finding that meaning and value in their work wherever they're working. Right. Well, and so ultimately, I mean, what you're doing is we, we talk about, you know, often about feeling burned out or, you know, our direction, our course, we're trying to navigate it, and it's like a labyrinth, and how do we get through it? Um, so you're really helping nurses with that process, in a sense, to, to try to find some clarity, to find some definition in who and what they're, who they are and what they're doing, um, and feeling good about that. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's. I think it's even a little bit more than that to kind of add to that. Since my work primarily involves speaking to large groups of nurses, not as much just working um, with one-on-one -on -one person, it's that really like getting that collective group together and being able to deliver some kind of um, medium to them, whether it's a talk or a workshop, something interactive or not, but that gets them sitting there in that chair inspired to do something, inspired to take the next step, inspired to have energy to change. Because, you know, if, if you're comfortable where you're at and you're comfortable being dissatisfied, then you're not going to change. But if you feel that inspiration and that motivation that I can do this and here's somebody that is standing there giving me that enthusiasm to, like, let me know I am confident to do it, that's really um, how i I envision myself helping people, getting them out of the chair and like taking the next step. <laughs> right. Well, uh, Elizabeth, that feeds into what Carol asked earlier. Her original question is what nurses dream about. So when you talk to these big groups, and then I want to ask Carol to chime in too, what do they say? What's their response? What are they, what's their, does their greatest desire? Well, I love um, watching people who come into a room and you can just feel the energy of like slumped down, exhausted, and demoralized. And then leaving and just standing up, tra standing up straight, you know, having the sense of purpose again, feeling that they are, you know, able to make a change. So when they actually go through with, you know, taking the first step of doing something that they want to do, it's just that feeling of joy. It's just reconnecting to feeling happy. And, and 
just feeling joy in your heart. I mean, you can, it's hard to like articulate in words. It's more of like a sense of feeling, um, of really feeling passionate and, and on purpose, purposeful with what you're doing. So it's mm. just really actually watching people have more fun in their lives. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I like, I like purposefulness, you know, nursing on purpose in a way. That could be a name of your next book. <laughs> we'll see. In yeah. the midst of my writing, I do need a title, so I'll think about it. <laughs> you do. You do. So, Carol, what about that? What about that sense of purpose? Well, actually, what, what yeah, actually, for a long time, I've been thinking that people spend a ton of money going on retreats and trying to find purpose and meaning. And I think nursing itself if it can be cast in the role of nursing as a path to transformation, uh, it's so much different. The vision that people will get if they think of nursing as transformative, as a journey, um, you know, it's sort of easy to pretend and practice and meditate, but when you get out there in the real world and you have to do it, is when you're provided with the experiences that are transformative and they do change it. They change you on a real deep soul level and I'm thinking that what nurses are asking for is for so much less than they deserve. They deserve more and if they can, if nursing can be reframed so that they can see themselves as of more value than even the culture gives them, then they wouldn't need as much recognition from other people who were outside the realm of um, transformation and evolution because I think nursing is really where it's at, service is where it's at, purpose is where it's at, and there are a ton of people making a lot of money selling purpose that we have. Hmm. So you're saying nurses have the purpose that they can use for their own transformation. Yeah, and they right. get to practice every day. Mm -hmm. But is it, is, uh, Kevin might have something to say about this, but I just want to ask, so is it the, the environment in which nurses work and the the stressors on them that prevent them from having those transformative experiences? Were you asking Kevin? Are you me? asking me that or were you asking um, Carol? Gosh, I don't know. Somebody... Um, <laughs> well, no, I mean, Carol, <laughs> well, no, Carol <laughs> feel free. Yeah, yeah, no, Carol, you're the guest, so feel free if you'd like. No, no, I get, actually, Kevin, actually, Keith, you're going to have to ask me that again now because I was, list, I was waiting and oh, okay. listening for Kevin's answer. So my question was oh, okay. basically the gist of it was that is the environment and the stress under which nurses work what prevents them from actually being able to have the transformative experience that they would like in their hearts? Um, I think it's. Um, I think we would have to have reframe it so they could see it um, more as transformative. Because you can't let the external environment change your own inner environment. I mean, it's sort of like caretaking and nurturing isn't valued as much in this society as it should be. It's sort of like I realized the other day that uh, one of the girls who comes over to help me clean my house so I can think, you see, uh, and she is so much better for me than my accountant, my lawyer, and everything else. So I decided, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll pay her the same as I pay those guys because that way I'll revalue uh, those aspects of caretaking and healing and nurturing because I find that that's more healing for me than somebody doing a bunch of numbers for me. But I think wow. we have to look at that the same as we have to revalue mothering and revalue the things that help create health rather than the construction of 
uh, processes and systems that help cure us once we haven't been given the possibility to be healthy. Is that confusing? Mm. Yeah. No, not at all. Um, you're hitting so the nail I think on various we... heads here. Okay. No, Kevin, I'm, sorry, I'm looking Carol. at well, you. No, you. Oh, yeah, no, no. I know, I know. The camera's kind of going back and forth. Um, you know, I, I don't even know how I can follow something that powerful, Carol. I really don't. Um, I just know that there are, un unfortunately, there are nurses out there that are in an environment where it's just, it, it's not very nurturing. It's not very conducive to be, to, to thrive. Um, and, and I think that as a consultant for myself, the one advantage that I at least have is choice. I have choice. And, and so what I mean by that is that it, even being an entrepreneur, there's still the grind aspect. I mean, I get stressed out. I can be overworked. But the one thing that I can say is that I have choice in that matter. And I can thrive because I feel like I'm in that seat to be able to make the decision of how I want to practice, who I want to practice with, who I want to work with, um, at, at, you know, choose my colleagues. And, you know, that to me... Uh, I think is extremely important. I think that nurses in general feel like, I mean, I think there's a power struggle. I think that there are nurses who do feel disempowered among their, um, uh, their, their fellow nurses out there and maybe even other healthcare providers that they're working with. And I think disempowerment is probably the impetus that either just drives us to feeling so stressed out, so burned out that we just, we drive ourselves in the ground or what we do is we take that energy, that negative energy, and it drives us to do something different, to practice nursing or to perform in a way that we want to perform or, you know, pursue a career in. I, I mean, you know, I don't know if that, if that makes sense, but, but that's just kind yeah. of how I see it. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, but I'm thinking that it's almost sort of like um, – we have some kind of values anorexia going on now or something, you know, that if, if, it's, not, if it's not physical, if it's not material, if it, it somehow doesn't define us as successful. When I know that some of the greatest gifts I've been given is the way helping someone else feeds me. Have I burned out sometimes? Absolutely. Have I gotten completely played? Yes. Have I not wanted to help somebody sometimes? Absolutely. But at the bottom of all of that is that feeling that I acted in congruence with who I really am, what I value, what my soul knows I need, and for that, I mean, yeah, I mean, they can hit me with palm leaves, too. <laughs> you know, it's only palm leaves, you know. Uh, I just think that the getting along with yourself and understanding your own value and not letting the culture define you completely Completely. Even though it sounds idealistic because I'm not working at a bedside now, I know if I go into a hospital and somebody is sick there and I hold their hands and I talk to them and I make them not invisible, even for that short period of time, I've done something that has helped them and therefore helped me. And it, it's a little thing. It's not the big things. It's all the little things that add up. And my favorite moments are personal, private, two-second moments. They're not the big things. I mean, the day that my book hit number one on the bestseller list on Publishers Weekly, uh, and everybody was congratulating me, I, I felt so at odds with myself, I can't tell you. What I felt like, well, 
why are you saying all these things are so wonderful? Why are you all attached to these patients that I only drew pictures of? It was almost like the difference between seeing a beautiful sunset and seeing a picture of a beautiful sunset. Where were all these people, these millions of people who bought my book? Where were they when when I needed help as a nurse, when the patients needed help, why were they able to close their eyes to it until it was marketed by somebody who made it seem as though it was a value? Mm. So, Carol, you're saying that even though your semi-fictional account of your nursing, and it, be, it received so many accolades and so much attention and congratulations and really tuned people into this picture that you painted that like you were saying it's really just a picture it's like a photo of a sunset not the actual sunset so it's the actual care you provide it's the face-to-face -face connection that's the that's really what it's all about for us so um, Elizabeth what do you think about that in terms of what Carol's saying the 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 gold in being there with the patient connecting and what do you hear from nurses when you talk to them about how they're fed by that? Well, it's an interesting question, Keith. Um, and first off, Carol, thank you so much for all of the information you shared. I'm just sitting here nodding along because I have to agree about the values um, and our values being sort of off kilter at the moment and people just being obsessed with material objects or wealth or prestige or perfectionism. So I was just like nodding along and just letting you talk but um, in agreement here. But to get to Keith's question, it's actually interesting because I um, was surveying nurses last fall and actually listening to people talking at my own institution. and. You know, I came across this theme, this challenging theme of all of the science, all of the technology, all of the advancements in medicine, you know, this um, electronic medical record, this documentation, this feeling of you're getting pulled in 16 different directions. And at 10 a.m., I was with the patient giving this medication, but, you know, really I was um, doing something else, but I had to chart the time. So that's sort of the dilemma I hear from folks is how to be in all these different places, how to actually be connected with a human being and have time for it, how to actually have that heartfelt connection with the patient. So um, I forget your question. I just remember that that was a theme I had heard. What was your original question, Keith? We wanted to know about your experience. Right. Oh, and, well, that's, what, the ex that's the experience. There you go. <laughs> right. And I was thinking about what you're hearing from people because Carol was talking about that, the how it feeds you when you're actually there in the moment, eye to eye with a patient or experiencing, you know, the power of nursing when you're actually providing care. And Carol was saying that's so much more real than reading about it, for instance. Right. Right. Yeah, so I guess what I was hearing from folks is that they're not having those connections. They're not sitting eye to eye. They're not feeling <laughs> that they are, you know, having those moments of presence with the patient. So um, that's my response is hearing people that that is a struggle, that having actual moments to bring in the healing presence, be a nurse with a patient. Right, right. Hmm. I guess part of what I'm thinking, too, is that... There are many situations like um, whether you're taking care of kids or whether you're culturally, um, it's all skewed now. It's off. I mean, they've taken the power away from parents and given it to institutions. There, there are a lot of different roles we play in, in every single day in different situations and stuff. What I'm thinking is... I wish that we could empower them with their own value by getting every core, every nurse has a soul, every doctor has a soul, every patient has a soul. When we turn it upside down and say, remember, the golden calf, it's nice to have money. It is. It makes it easier to fix your tires, and it makes it easier to hire a babysitter if you need to get it out. But essentially, it doesn't change 
the you of you, the soul of you, the purpose of what you have to do. I've heard so many people lately say, um, when a couple of people are sick, well, I wonder why they're manifesting this. And they ask me, why do you think they're manifesting this? And I think, why do you think that manifestation takes place in such a narrow time slot? How do you know it's not left over from the soul before and experience before? before? Because once we accuse people of manifesting an illness, we've immediately shut ourselves off at heart level from the compassion we need to help heal them, which can eventually heal us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a fake, um, it's, it's not really within our control. Sometimes we really just have to go through it. We have to knuckle up and just go through it. It's the human condition, and the, nobody ever promised us a rose garden, you know. Human bodies fail. They do. That, oh. That's how it happens. <laughs> What are you laughing about? I thought someone did promise us a rose garden. Jeez. Really? Yeah. Oh. Well, Kevin, you Laura, have... well, no, I was going to say, and Laura Smith out there, she commented. She said, what's going on right now? She just joined. Um, so we're talking about rose gardens, uh, Laura. So if <laughs> right. you're oh, out there. Yeah. It's the, it's the uh, RNFM how... radio gardening show. <laughs> yes, yes, we're actually waxing poetic about how, you know, we, we prune and we meticulously take care of our gardens um, as nurses. And so, yes, <laughs> right. uh, you didn't well, know we were going to talk about horticulture, agriculture. Here, that's right. So. Well, you know, Gavin, that's a really great metaphor. Carol, you could probably run on this for for thousands of words in a blog post about the, the garden of nursing. You know, what we're, what are yeah, we... Like what, growing yourself, yeah, growing yourself in the garden of one, right? Right, and what's what compost do you use to, you know, keep yourself healthy and well? And, you know, there, I, God, there's so many places yeah, we can run with you that. Gotta, you got to have the seeds of self-forgiveness, you know, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Or we could play, we could have an interactive game that a bunch of us get into, say, and then we can find out what kind of trees, what kind of landscape. Hey, did I tell you that I was writing a book <laughs> called The Eight Coats of Meaning? You've told me about that book. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. writing a what? book called The Eight Coats of Meaning. Well, what, what, what are the eight coats, or what are a couple of the coats? Okay, there's the code of trust, there's the dream coat, there's the code of oh, truth. Oh, code, I thought you said coats. Me I too. Did. Yeah, coat. they are coats. I did, I said oh, coat. Oh. Coat, coats. coat oh, like okay. coat. Yeah, okay. it's a magical, it's a magical thing that I have already started a web page called Roshanna's Garden. Uh, where she tells or Roshanna's magic garden or Roshanna's garden. I have a spirit of joy and creativity. What can I tell you? And she writes stories for me all the time. And so she wants us to do the eight coats of meaning. And that's what we're doing. But I'll, I have fun with those. That's where, um, that's I guess what I would consider um, an alternative to therapy. To, because that soothes my soul. Those mm. um, those soul movies that she gives me uh, feeds my mind, takes me to the end of my creativity, warms my heart, and makes me happy. I'm a human with the ability and capacity to reach for anything I want. And there's nothing really out of bounds, except I probably wouldn't be a good builder because I'm not tall enough or young enough anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, hey, I wanted, to, I wanted to ask, so Elizabeth, when it gets tough for you, um, because obviously you are a guru, uh, just like Keith is, when we talk about self-care and what nurses can really do uh, to take care of themselves and, and redirect what do you do when things get tough? How do you how do you manage that? Well, that's a really great question. And actually, you know, I I've always shared from the honest, heartfelt truth of what I'm doing. So, you know, mm -hmm. if anyone's reading my articles or following my videos, you know, I say I'm not perfect in any of this kind of stuff because for the moment it's freezing here. I mean, I'm in Maryland, I'm in this polar vortex of I don't know how cold, and I haven't exercised, and I can't remember how long. I feel a little bit guilty, but 
I really don't feel like even going outside to go to my car. So, <laughs> you know, um, so what I'm, what I'm answering is it kind of shifts from time to time. So lately, what I do when things are getting tough, um, I want to echo what Carol was just saying. I definitely write. I am in my journal constantly. And when I write, it's just kind of like, doesn't even make sense. There's no really consciousness of anything. I'm just kind of venting. And then I'm getting stuff off my chest so that when I'm out there experiencing the world and interacting with people and my family and my colleagues or my profession, all of that clutter and chaos from up here is gone. It's out. Um, the other things that I've been doing, as, as Keith mentioned in my revised bio as the spiritual practice nurse, you know, I do Reiki on myself every single day. I do my meditation. I, I do my gratitude practice morning and evening. So lots of things that one might consider not really conventional health because right now, as I said, I'm not exercising. But I do have a plan to get back to exercising. So it's just whatever I'm enjoying at the moment, and I think that's the key. Whatever you're going to find is going to be fun for you that you're actually going to do. Um, because if it feels like another chore, if it feels like more work, and you, you know, someone's telling you to eat healthy, but you don't know how to make healthy food, you can't stand going to the grocery store, it's intimidating, then don't take that on. So my, my, uh, when the going gets tough, I just do whatever at the moment I'm enjoying that is going to make me feel uplifted and energized. Mm. Right. Well, I, I think that's, those are great words to live by. With. And I think that's the beauty about what the, the, the community really needs to hear is that it does get tough. You know, you can get up on stage or in front of people or on a phone call with them and motivate the heck out of them. You know, as far as like trying to find some direction, trying to, you know, focus on their self-care and take out, take some time for themselves, uh, better nutrition, good nutrition is good medicine, uh, all of those things. But we, we all run into those um, hurdles or we have to get over those hurdles. And like you said, you're in the tundra right now where it's very <laughs> chilly. And <laughs> I am sorry to hear that because there's nothing like cold that really does keep us away from uh, engaging in those exercise routines, especially the ones that we have to get outside and do. And I, right. I'm guilty myself. Right. And, I, and, and it's another thing. What do I love to do? When I'm stressed, I love to go outside, whether it's go for a walk, sit on my back deck with my dogs, go sit by. I have this really cool pond in my neighborhood. So, like... That's one of my, like, when times get tough and I'm all stressed out, like, I want to go outside. Well, that's not really happening. So, I'm, right. you know, I've been in here and just dancing along and just doing my little stress relief things. But there's always something, you know, and then you know what there is, too? I want to say this because this is important for nurses, especially being one, all of us on this call, when the going gets tough and you're exhausted and stressed out, the last thing you need to do is keep going. I think it's perfectly okay for a nurse to take a rest, to take a break, and I don't care if you're saying you can't get off this unit, and I don't have time, and blah, blah, and no one's watching my patient. You're not effective when you're not you know, when you're feeling badly, even myself as a nurse entrepreneur, I'm not going to write a blog post, create a video, go give a talk if I'm feeling bad, because guess what? You all in the audience can tell that. So if I'm feeling bad and stressed out, like there's really no point in doing any more work. So take a break. <laughs> <laughs> mm. no, that's, that's great. Good. That's good. That's great. You know, we, we hear so much about nurses who, um, aren't even allowed to have water on their nurse's station where they're working. Meanwhile, the doctors are walking through with open cups of coffee and spilling them all over the place. Not to cast aspersions on doctors, but just an example. Or nurses who say they get UTIs because they can't even get to the restroom during their shift. It really seems like nurses have to take responsibility. Sure, I mean, it's, it's easy to say, well, it's too busy. I can't get to the restroom. I can't have a glass of water. I can't even have a granola bar, but it does come down to nurses really having to just say, I have to do this, I have to take care of myself, because there's no way I can keep providing care if I go on like this. Mm -hmm. Well, did, I, well, no, I wanted to just quickly say, and I've said this before, I think, too, being a female-dominated profession, and I'm, I'm, I'm treading very carefully here, ladies, I, I all due respect. You do that, but, Speak up, but, speak up, but, but, be brave. But, 
<laughs> well, no, but what I wanted to say was, I, I've said this even in the in the business sense too, because I want nurses to feel like they have a voice. But it but it almost seems because it is a female dominated profession, and let me let me translate that also into a business world. You might have a woman up there in a meeting who's giving a presentation, and she is just very vocal about it, and she's really trying to sell it, and you know really wants her team to like you know build up emotion or whatever that is. Um, and maybe she looks like it's on the negative side a little bit, even still. And so people might refer to her as bitching, whereas um, if a man were up there doing the same thing, he might be seen as passionate. And so that's the thing. It's like, is it is it the way we hear it? Is it the filter that we either have or don't have that the way that we hear nurses as it, it's more like complaining, but really maybe they're just voicing their concerns. But because maybe it's a female dominated profession, do we see them more as bitching? And again, hmm. all due respect, ladies, I wa I, I'm with you. I, I just wanted to go against the grain here and play devil's advocate and pretty well, much. Well, you haven't said anything here. unforgivable yet. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I, I just <laughs> see that again, I think it just goes with that disempowerment. Um, I think, you know, nurses, male or female, I mean, they just, I do feel like generally, because Keith, you mentioned that where, and we don't want to open that can of worms about, you know, the docs out there versus the nurses and walking down, you know, the, the hallways with coffee and then the nurses can't have uh, a, a closed, like a bottle of water mm -hmm. at the nurse's station. Mm -hmm. And again, if they were to voice those concerns, how is, you know, how are the leadership, how's the leadership team seeing them versus, you know, the docs going in and saying, you know, I need my coffee. I need to be able to think. I need to be able to diagnose. I need to be able to treat. I don't know. This, you, you better watch out. I better go off my soapbox because I could really go all over the place. So. Kevin, I think you're really right. That's one of the reasons I put together that battered nurse syndrome stuff. Because how do you get a woman or a man who's getting beat up to leave a partner? They've got to take some responsibility for being treated badly. Mm -hmm. They have to, and unless we realize that we all have to hang together to be able to accomplish anything, we have to say this is unacceptable. What you got to watch Mad Men on Netflix or wherever now that it's, Love Mad you know, Man. like even the president mentioned that the other day, then you'll yeah. realize how it took, secretaries had a change, I mean, we really have uh, gotten somewhere, but nurses may be the last holdouts who haven't gotten up, like even housewives, and said, no more, this is crap. I'm not going to tolerate this anymore. Work on your own. Otherwise, we're going to find an island to go to, you know. Because they've got kids to support sometimes. They're single moms. Sometimes stuff like that. But, you know, bullies in old fashion, especially business bullies, back down quicker than anything if you tell them that you're going to give them bad publicity, that you're not going to all... But you need to be able to know what you deserve to be able to tell them what you deserve. And you know the greatest line in the world? You just look at whoever's doing this stuff and you just say, this is unacceptable, you know. And somehow they take it and run with it. I don't know why. You don't even have to justify it. You just have to say, this is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And they just, I, I've said it to at least a dozen and a half doctors, nurses, supervisors and everything. Just this is unacceptable. And then you keep quiet while they struggle for what they're going to present that would be acceptable. So you're, you're talking about nurses really speaking out, really speaking their truth. Oh, majorly. And I'm talking about two things. I'm talking about them being apathetic and not understanding their own value. And I'm mm -hmm. talking another thing about, as women, sorry about this, I have to say this, it's okay. Kat, we didn't learn to pay play team sports well enough because mm -hmm. otherwise we'd know that the weakening of one of us was the weakening of all of us, you know, and until we are willing to hang together for something bigger than ourselves, we are going to undermine our own as well as our own profession as well as our own value. We've got to forget the little crap and understand that we've got to hang together. And, mm. and business people, if you tell them it's going to cost them, they somehow rethink it, 
You know, you just got to sort of, <laughs> you got to, you know, stop them. They, right. You can't let them do it to you, you know? Right. Well, Elizabeth, what do you think about that? What do you think about that nurses speaking up? What do you hear out there in the world with your your antenna out in the out in the community? Well, it's kind of interesting, and I think actually I either have talked with Carol about this before or we've sort of had a discussion. I don't have the exact same feeling. I, I do agree about um, finding a voice, speaking your truth, and being empowered to make a conscious choice to say this is unacceptable or I have to have water or whatever the choice is. Every moment is a choice. So. We have to feel confident within ourselves as individuals to be able to do that. And that's where I have sort of a differing of opinion um, to the extent where sometimes I see nursing as this sort of like group think kind of collective group. And we're so ingrained with each other's crap that when you look around, all you can see is the person on my left is complaining. The person on my right has that drama going on. I know exactly what they're talking about. And it just sucks you down into more of that nasty negativity. So that's where my opinion is a little bit different, where I really believe it's up to the individual. And this is hard, and this is why I have never stuck with one group of friends. I have never kept a job. I am quite an individual person. Um, I don't believe in being in this group think. I want to get out from the group. I want to um, enjoy myself and, and be able to leave that kind of being pulled down feeling. And so if nurses one by one can feel that uplifted sense, then the more people, the more individuals that can get out of that funnel kind of feeling, um, the more that then the entire group will be uplifted as a profession. So it's kind of the opposite, even though I agree with what Carol's saying, and, and I do have the same um, opinions around value and appreciating yourself, but kind of the opposite connotation, the way I see no, it. I, I don't think, Elizabeth, is opposite, because I really do agree with you. I think that each of us should take the responsibility to empower ourselves, and then understand step two is, if a friend is complaining all the time, if, if they're all getting into negative crap, you either help reframe it for them or say, Jesus, this is boring, can't do this anymore. The more important thing is what's good about your day, what's good. Step two is the unification. Step one is the individuation, you know. And I do think that you have to have both. And I don't think groupthink is a good thing. I agree absolutely with you on all of that. But I think that it's sort of like being a separate uh, a completely separate link in a chain, you, you have no strength if you stand alone. You have to understand that as an individual you're important, but also the group has to value itself. The same as any team understands that a goalie is one position, you know, when quarterback is another, you know. We're all in different positions, but the team is um, greater than the whole until the whole walks out and is on their own, you know, but it doesn't <laughs> seem that that's what they're playing, you know? Until the whole goes on strike. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy! Wow, we th there's so many things we can talk about with the two of you. There's just there's an endless number of subjects that where we could just keep going and wax poetic about so many aspects of nursing. Um, Kevin, did you have another theme or anything you wanted to introduce before we um, say goodbye for the day? Well, I I just wanted our listeners to know. I mean, really, the take home message is because we we just. Sort of, kind of fell into the whole. We went from gardening and then into like the pit of doom. <laughs> um, I don't know what happened there. Because <laughs> um, there, there's this, there's this feeling. We should have ended on gardening. Ding it. So anyway, um, I can bring the, you back to the pit of doom. Yeah. Well, I, I guess that's the thing. And we really well, wanted to tie this all together. No, go ahead. Go ahead. It's not even the pit of doom. Honestly, I, I feel like that is such a 
terrible way. You're right to end it, and also I feel guilty of bringing that like picture in. But oh no, I'm ju I'm just I'm just saying that there there's you know this doom circling around the profession, and let's all be these empowered individuals who oh, yeah. want to lift up the entire group. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's actually how I wanted to end it. I I think we we do need to talk about it. I mean, it is a scab or a Band-Aid that we either need to pick or pull off or whatever, get rid of it. Um, but, it, you know, misery loves company, and I think that a lot of times we, we hear this whole – that I think that's where nursing – that camp is a lot of times. And you, you hear yeah. about, you know, nurses we – it is. I think it's truly misery loves company, and then there are those nurses who they get promoted or they go on to other things, and you might hear sort of the cohort of the group saying, oh, yeah, good, good for you, great, and, but not really, not sincerely, I don't think. I mean, together we do. We just need to band together to help because there is a huge disconnect. There really is a huge disconnect, I think, uh, with the nurses uh, in the clinical setting versus the nurse that might be in more of the leadership roles. But quite frankly, we're both nurses, or we're, we're all nurses. We're, we're all doing something uh, for the good of the client or the patient. We're all moving in that same direction. However, somehow it just seems like the navigation or the communication breakdown is just so huge that I think it is challenging for us to be able to move in one fluid motion. Mm -hmm. But I think if enough of us, enough of us, it doesn't have to be all of us at once, but enough of us that can cause a ripple effect to really change the course. Mm -hmm. It's just a slow-moving ship. It, is well, it seems like a fast-moving ship. ship, but just slow to correct it. True. You know, part of it, Kevin, uh, is though that culturally, again, we're right in the middle of a big old victim society. You know, we have 12 steps for everything. I'd love to have like 24 steps. The second 12, after you get over the first 12, should be in building up a whole new no victim thing. I mean, because if you see whether it's the media, whether it's every once in a while they come up with, would you believe somebody fed a homeless person? Somebody did a, you know, every once in a while it's, it's as though it's like, I don't know. It's not the money. It, the awful stuff they broadcast almost constantly, okay? And if you listen to that all the time, you can believe it's really like that. Mm -hmm. What I believe now is, oh, my God, don't they live in a terrible world? Mm -hmm. Because they've got to do that, and they keep raising the bar and raising the bar, and they tell the most awful stories, and they say, Imagine what, look at, there were kids caught on a bus in Atlanta because nobody got stuff out, you know, salt off the streets and nobody was taking responsibility. You know, yeah, it's sort of a little awful, but nobody, none of the kids died on the bus. Everybody brought them sandwiches. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I think we have to learn to have different expectations about life. Here we are, Kevin, the Rose Garden. It's not a rose garden. It's a damn jungle. <laughs> but there's some beautiful flowers in it. There's some great moments. There's beautiful animals. And sometimes you can even fly, you know? So, right. I mean, I think we have to turn it around so that we can make it an important um, difference, you know? Right, right, right. <laughs> Sorry. Somebody's right. phone. Not, not, nobody's calling into the studio right now. That's actually on Carol's end. <laughs> but, right. but, but yeah, but ultimately, yeah. I mean, I think it just kind of comes back to empowerment. I do need. We do need to kind of focus on the garden. We do need to um, figure out because we hear these stories about well, nurses are just a ray of sunshine. We hear that from patients, but mm -hmm. we don't. And, and, and so, if I'm walking around and I'm supposed to be sunshine, how come I feel so darn cold inside? How come I don't feel a ray of sunshine? How don't I don't feel so warm and fuzzy inside? But right. I'm, I'm, but I'm apparently I'm walking around as a ray of sun. Right. Here. Well, Elizabeth Scala's a ray of right. Elizabeth Scala's a ray of sunshine, isn't she? Is she is beaming. <laughs> she is beaming. Absolutely. I just every love. Day. I could. I could. I was like, every single thing that um you both were just saying, I was like, guys, but and this and that and like, I have so many more things. You're right. We're gonna need to have another show. <laughs> we will. We will. We'll have a of show. We um, will. We will. Ten tending the garden, tending the jungle, something like that. Oh God. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. We definitely have to. 
Yes. Uh, let's write that, that one we're down. Recording this so we remember what we say. Yeah, it's yeah, a good let's thing. Or, or let's so, also put yeah. one in for then um, that the uh, as Carol was just talking about with the media and the attention that negative news gets versus positive. I mean, there are so many more positive things happening on a daily basis that that just are not tended to. So it's all about where, you know, the attention goes and, and it's mm -hmm. all about energy. So if you want to talk about uh, energy and attention, put that down as one too. <laughs> oh gosh, we'll have to do that too. So speaking of energy and attention, Kevin and I have been putting a lot of energy and attention into RNFM radio lately. Today is, like we said, it's the 100th episode. Yay! And we don't have any canned applause on the show, but we can just pretend. <laughs> right. Right. Thank, right. you, thank you, thank um, yeah. you. So, I wanted to ask you both, since you're both such deeply spiritual and thoughtful and beautiful souls, I wanted to actually ask here on the air live, put you on the spot for a little blessing for RNFM Radio and our next hundred. Our next hundred episodes. So, Elizabeth, what would you say, not just to us, but to all the people listening about the show and where you'd like to see it go and what you'd like to feel from the show? Hmm. Let's wait. Let's all let's all hold virtual hands. Okay. And, and, well, wow. I'm in Santa Fe, you know, so that so. we can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just virtual Texas. hands. Virtual hands. Okay. Texas. Go ahead. Bless the show here. Here we go. Well, I would like to impart that this show be extremely successful and enjoyable for all who partake in it, that the nursing profession, every single individual can find this show and through the wisdom that they gain and through the energy that they feel and the enthusiasm they experience, they feel uplifted and empowered so that our entire profession can have a massive epic shift because of RNFM radio. Wow. That's mm. nice. Thank you, Elizabeth. That's been recorded. <laughs> good, good. And I think I'd like it to be, I'd like RNFM Radio to be a vehicle that grows and grows and grows for sharing miracles. Mm. Oh, wow. I'd Thank like you, us like to that. focus, I'd like us to focus on the intimacy of our position as nurses, which allows us to be on the inside of the unfolding of all the miracles we see happening all of the time. Mm. Very nice. Namaste. Wow. Well, you heard it here, folks, first. Two blessings from two of our most spiritually um, accomplished and deeply thinking guests that we've had on the show. And we're so grateful to both of you. It's really wonderful having you here for our 100th episode. Well, what do you hope speaking, for the show? What do you hope for your show? <laughs> Go ahead, well, Ken. I, no, I think that Keith and I have been very uh, aligned with this mission, which is, it's probably uh, changed over the course of the time that we've been doing this show, but only, only minutely. I think we initially had honed in on just the entrepreneurial aspects of nursing, but, but as a whole, to be honest, Carol and Elizabeth, and of course our listeners out there, we truly want to be the platform that not only our guests, guests can come to and share their stories, share what they're doing, um, talk about what it is that they can offer our community, but we really want to help unite the voice of nurses. I mean, I think truly we do. Just like Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus and YouTube, it's a place for people to voice their opinions and what's going on, and we hope that RNFM Radio could also be that place for them to project their voices. And, and mm -hmm. we hope that it won't just be about projecting their voices, but really it is a one united effort here, as we talked about, going back to the sort of the gardening and getting out of the pit of doom, um, that we do need that one united voice. That doesn't sound like bitching, but actually sounds like, you know, we're voicing our concerns and enough is enough and a change is upon us. Good change. Right. That's great, Kevin. And I echo that. And, you know, Kevin, you all you often talk about the community, and I feel like that's a really important part of it. And Elizabeth and Carol, you're part of the community, and the almost 100 guests we've had on the show are part of it. But then all the listeners, the people on all the social media platforms, I mean, it's really, it, this is, has been a labor of love for 100 episodes. It's going to be for hundreds more, we, we're sure, and it's really about reaching out to the nursing community and also people outside the community who want to learn what nursing is all about because we're trying to redefine 
that very narrow vision that we've had for so long of who nurses are and what they do and what they what they love and what they want. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my 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 feedback well, on that too. And then speaking of community, Keith, um, yeah. we, we had a we had a few uh, live listeners here and some questions. Uh, Leah and Laura and Andrew Lopez over at Nurse Up and Nurse Friendly. We wanted to offer you an opportunity. Well, really, the opportunity, it's there for the taking. You just have to get in touch with us so that we can send you out. We have RNFM Radio T-shirts that we want to uh, give you. So just by participating today and listening in, we would love to send those out to you. So hit us up via our social media platforms, either under the hashtag or either at RNFM Radio, hashtag RNFM Radio, Facebook, Google+, somewhere. Just get in touch with us, and we would love to send you out an RNFM Radio T-shirt uh, just for being here today. And not only that, I don't know how many, but, but at least uh, quite a bit of a handful there. For those of you that are listening to this archive show, this 100th episode here with Carol and Elizabeth, which has been so much fun. I don't want to hang up. I really want to <laughs> But as Elizabeth said, we, we'll, just, we'll have another broadcast. We want to give you the opportunity, too, as well, to share your story, to let us know how you feel about this show. Um, what's going on in your garden? Are you pulling weeds? Uh, is anything growing in there? Whatever that is, however you see that, let us know, and we'd love to send you out, again, as part of the giveaway for the 100th episode here, more shirts. So we'll just pick a handful of you out there, and we'll just send you out some shirts. So mm -hmm. just hit us up on our social media platforms. Uh, you know where to find us, and if you don't, just head over to rnfmradio.com, and you can find all of our social media platforms over there, and we'll be sure to watch out for that and then send you out a shirt. And I, that's great, Kevin. I know Carol had a few books she she was interested in giving away. So we might, Carol, we might do that on um, social media. So we may, we'll talk with you after the show and we'll figure out what that will be and we'll, we'll get that out on our platforms too. How's that? That's good. Great. Whatever you yeah. want is good with me. Okay. I think, oh, and, and I think and I have thing. to give you this, Wait, I have to give you this feedback. Yeah. I want you to know yeah. that I really do go back and listen to the uh, tapes that you make and stuff like that, you know. So you shouldn't think because I'm not listening in the moment that I don't go back and listen to what's happening with it. Mm. And stuff. So it's really valuable that we can listen to it later on if things aren't, um, you know, mm, if we're not able to in the moment. Right. Thank it's you. It's a great thing to listen to when you drive an hour to and from work on mm -hmm. your iPod. Yeah. Uh, thanks for that plug. Indeed. That's right. So we're gonna we're gonna clean up shop here and we have a few announcements before we go, but we wanna thank you both for participating and being here and playing with us on our first live Google Hangout on air. So Carol Gino, everyone can find you at hopefulhealer.com, right? And yeah. Elizabeth Scala, everyone can find you at elizabethscala.com. We mm -hmm. welcome you to check them out, all their different platforms, Facebook, etc., and just hit them up for information and inspiration because they're two of the most inspiring nurses anywhere. So please go out and find them. Thank you, Keith and Kevin. Good to see you, Carol. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thank Thanks, you, Elizabeth. Keith. Thank you, Kevin. Okay. Hey, Kevin, yes. Keith. Keith, yes, um, yes. He, Keith comes across better than your equipment does, Techie. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Much well, we'll better. Work on that. Much better. Well. You got to fix it. What about for you, Elizabeth? Is Keith coming better or is Kevin? I can see Keith more often. Kevin's, uh, yeah, video's cutting out. Oh. Yeah, okay. your video isn't great. Well... I, well, we'll and here's the thing. That. Maybe it's because I'm having to carry the load of hosting the Hangout and the mixer and mm. everything. Oh, God. That's oh, right. right. But I can That's hear right. you really I'm good. <laughs> Your sound good. quality okay. is really good. <laughs> good, good. Well, thank you both so much Boy. for being here. And us. thank you very much. And we'll talk to you soon. Elizabeth, we'll talk. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Right. Sounds great. Bye. Thank hey, you. How, how do we get off? You uh, just hit the hangout button. There, there we go. Top. Well, yeah. Kevin, that was a great hundredth episode. That was that was really fun, and I'm um, very inspiring with Elizabeth and Carol. I think they were such wonderful guests to have today. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more, Keith. And seriously, we could we could just keep going on and on and on. And 
this this is not the end. That's the beauty about RNFM Radio. We've been around so long, and I, and I hope that we'll continue to be around so long. Elizabeth's going to definitely be back. Kara will definitely be back. She and will. We just kind of keep having a repeat. And certainly there are many of you out there that we can hear. You, you know, we, we would love to hear from you. We would love to have you on the show. And we do. We do. I mean, we have a, a pretty full agenda out there, a pretty full schedule. But it's just that there's so much information. There's so much good information. And shows like this really – uh, are what we need to have another show because there's so much that we just don't touch on. I mean, we've had that happen a couple of times. And no matter how many times we've had Carol on and Elizabeth, mm-hmm. I feel like every time we hang up with them, it's like, oh, wait, we could have said this or we could have done that. So right. just another show because that's it is. true. It's just such powerful information. Right. We need the garden show, the jungle show. You know, there's, there's a lot that came out today. So um, speaking of upcoming shows, Kev, I just want to say that next week on the February 5th, we're going to have Seth Hammock. He's my friend, and he lives down in Austin, Texas. He's an expert medical interpreter, and we're going to be talking about that specialty of medical interpreting, how to make the most of it as a nurse when you're working with an interpreter, and also job opportunities for nurses out there who have a proclivity with languages and would really like to see how they could use their language skills as nurses. And I think that's going to be a pre-recorded podcast as far as I can tell. Now on February 12th, that's two weeks from today, we'll have Renee Thompson and Susan Strauss. It's going to be a nurse bullying roundtable and I'm pretty sure that's going to be a live Google Hangout on air just like today, correct? That is correct. As far as we know, and we're going to have more of these Hangouts on air because I guess hopefully you like looking at us. I don't know. Now I got to get my hair done. I got to make Yeah, you I do. Shave. That's true. That's true. Part. Yeah. So, well, you're wearing your um, T-shirt. That's good. And um, let's see. On the 19th, three weeks from now, we have Sarah Brennan Mott of NurseBorn.com, and NurseBorn.com features her products that she's created, and she's also going to be featuring other nurses who are nurse inventors and entrepreneurs who've produced actual physical products for the use of nurses and others. So that's going to be really fascinating. And finally. On February 26th, rounding out the month of February, we have Suzanne Gordon. She is a very famous writer all about nursing and uh, health care. And she's going to have some of her colleagues on. It's actually not necessarily talking about her books. It's actually a play. It's a play that she and her colleagues who are playwrights have have um, invented and, and developed that they take to actual healthcare facilities to help healthcare facilities with their communication and their patient care. So that'll be really interesting, very groundbreaking. I think nothing like this has ever been done before. So we'll have Suzanne Gordon, the very well-known Suzanne Gordon on the 26th with some of her colleagues from that play. And we'll tell you more about that as the time comes closer. So Kev, I'm just going to tell people they can of course find us at facebook.com slash rnfmradio, but the best place to find us is rnfmradio.com. That's where every Everything is. That's your central, um, your central place to find anything about us, about RNFM Radio, and about what's coming up. So, Kevin, congratulations on episode 100. It's been a great adventure, and I respect you and have so much love and for you. And you're just a wonderful guest host, uh, 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 host and partner. And thank you so much for this great journey. Keith, you get me on video. Now people are going to see the tears. Uh, but I, too, have enjoyed uh, 100 episodes with you, sir. It has been a true honor and pleasure. And, again, the listeners out there, the community, we really do this for you, for our guests. Keith and I, uh, we just we enjoy it so much. We really do. There's a lot of work, especially now. There's a lot of work that goes into this show. But we're just going to continue to be to, to remain steadfast and sure that this show is going to continue to reach the masses. And, of course, thanks to Stitcher Radio uh, for reaching out today that we are now on Stitcher Radio. And, again, you can get that app on your iOS device or your Android device. Wayne Nix, uh, he had asked a question. Unfortunately, Wayne, I'm so sorry that we didn't get a chance to address that question. But, Wayne, just for your participation, we're going to send you out a shirt today. We'll bring on that question at a later time. And Vernon Dutton, thank you so much for wishing us a happy 100th. Again, it's because of you. We really appreciate it. And Leah and Andrew and Laura out there. Just get in touch with us, and we will certainly be uh, sending you shirts. You just need to send, tell us where to send them. So in some way, I hope you feel, felt uplifted, motivated, and ready for something that moves the needle for you. Take care of those gardens. Stay away from the pit of doom. 
continue to find things that motivate you and push you to wherever it is that you need to be to be successful. Care for yourself while caring for others, and we look forward to having you back here with us again on RNFM Radio.